Okay, everybody, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the Cornell method of note-taking, and this is what the page would look like. Um, there's variations on this. Make it adaptable to what you want to use. I use a variation of this. I've always used it, where I have the keywords and ideas with the date and the class clearly printed at the top of each page, and the page is numbered. I'm only using one page here, so it's not a big deal, but I would number the page so that it's clear how many pages um, I'm going to be using for each class, right? Uh, and I keep one book per class that I use when, when I'm going through, uh, when I was going through like this. So your keywords and ideas, a lot of the key stuff that's going to be there in the PowerPoint is going to be here. Your main ideas, things that you want clarified, gaps in your understanding, questions, clarification, all that sort of stuff, you write down on the other column, the smaller column, uh, to be able to ask about afterwards. Find out in the readings. Make sure you're clear on what those concepts are, and maybe it means reviewing your notes after class and then contacting the instructor by email or during office hours to make sure that, that those concepts are very clear. And then at the bottom, you put the summary either of the lesson or the summary of that section of that page. So if you're going through uh, a section on different types of democracy there are or different types of government systems there are, uh, which we'll look at in a second here, then you might want to put the summary of the lesson down here uh, after you've gone through the main ideas and, and clarified and, and really have a clear conception of what the differences are. Okay. Uh, I like to use the back of the other side of the paper for ideas for my paper, if I'm going to be doing papers that are in, in the class, um, or uh, even ideas for other papers, for other classes, right? Write that on there. You look at it again very quickly afterwards. If it's not stuff that's an idea for this book, for this class that you're doing, then make sure you copy that information into the book that you're using or into the notes of the other class that you're using so that you'll be able to readily see them and, and be able to utilize those ideas. And quite often it's a reference or a fact that comes out that's like, oh, that'll help me with that paper or that'll help me with this paper. That, uh, that study or that name is somebody I want to look up more to be able to accurately uh, get the best possible resources for a paper that I'm looking at at the end of the semester, in September, you're not going to remember it just by writing it down, jotting it, wherever. You have to make sure that it's with the material for the class that you want to use it for. All right. So that's sort of my adaptation to the Cornell method that I've always used. Um, again, this is going to be multiple pages during a class. Right. So you'll probably use three or four pages during a regular lecture, during a class. Uh, and that's okay. And But you want summaries of each section as, as it seems appropriate uh, of what you're doing on each page to, to make sure that those concepts, macro level concepts and, and conceptions are very clear for yourself. Okay, so this is the difference between passive note taking and active note taking. So in passive note taking, I don't really have a good example of it here. Uh, it's really people who try to write down everything they hear in a lecture that's not going to be helpful. Uh, just simply copying slides from a screen, that's not going to be helpful either. Those slides are there as a guide, a reference point to be able to start talking about the key parts of the information that we're introducing. Uh, copying lots of direct quotes rather than putting the ideas into your own words. If it's in your own words, you're going to retain it. You're going to remember it better. And you're going to know what you've written and what it means that you've written better when it comes to studying for an exam. Uh, and just writing notes on everything that that is presented is not that helpful because it really doesn't clarify for yourself what's most important. This summary at the bottom should be telling you exactly what the most important parts are from that lecture. All right. So we're going to go look at another one of these. Let me just find it here. So again, Cornell method, just so you're clear on this, keywords and ideas, uh, repeated or stressed information, diagrams, PowerPoint info, you want that in the larger section there, okay? All in here. Your main ideas, 
So the overarching main idea is sort of like your topic sentence that you would use if you were going to write a paper about um, that lecture would go over here. Questions that you might have that that where you see gaps in, in your learning. Uh, so learning gaps, questions that you might have, things that you need to clarify, write those over there. Now, how does this make sense with that? Some people will put up their hand in class and do that. Other people won't and prefer to really absorb that or combine it with the reading. If you see a discrepancy or something that's just presented differently in the lecture than it was in a reading, that's a good thing to jot down and to make sure it's clear before it comes into examination time. All right. So down here, this is the main part of what you're going to be reviewing. These are your review notes. Uh, once you've asked clarification, you create a summary of the lesson there, of that page or that portion of the lesson. And what's most important? What are the key things that are likely to be asked on a test? So if it was in the reading and you're prepared, and it was in the reading and it's presented in a lecture, that's something you want to make note of and make sure that you're very clear on before you go into an examination. So that's just another way, uh, just a, a easy way to set up the page um, to make your note writing effective. Okay, that's just one example of it, of course. So why we present this is if we go into a lecture, and this is just from, I've played around with it from one of my uh, 150 lectures, you're going to get something like this. Now this is a PowerPoint. It's got information on it. But does it tell you much about what an autocracy is? No. It presents the word. It guides me as the instructor to make sure I've talked about each subject. It presents a visual example of what an autocracy is. So Kim Jong-il, or is now his son in North Korea, um, and what autocracy means. So your notes aren't going to be autocracy. Basic concept, autocracy, Kim Jong-il. That's not going to help you for an exam. That's not going to help you understand what an autocracy is. What I'm going to talk about with this slide would be that an autocracy is one person controlling government and controlling the decision making of the populace of that country for everybody. Unilateral decision making. That's what an autocracy is in its basic format. And that's what you're going to want to write down in, in your summary there. Autocracy unilateral decision making right it's as simple as that the whole thing that will be talked about for five minutes with some examples could be broken down to just that that's the key concept that you want to have in your notes same thing here democracy okay and i'll talk about democracy and what that means it's everybody um a form of decision making where everybody gets a say uh in in that decision and it's just the the majority wins. It's a majority leadership government in, in decision making. So again, when you come down to something like this, you might want to write down everything here, but it's probably not going to be that helpful. Democracy is nothing more than a method of making decisions, including choosing officials, the proposal, or the person who gets the most votes wins. Well, yeah, but that's not really a definition. That's just explaining what that is to you understanding what a democracy is that it's the most votes wins and everybody gets a say that's the note that you want to have from this you don't want to bother yourself with rock paper scissors you want to know that democracy is a form of group decision making but don't get caught up in the other stuff because i'm not going to put rock paper scissors on an exam right so it's just a way of uh, making an example of what that is and how groups make decisions, right? That's the key key concept, the key piece of information that you want to have in your notes from this information, okay? Then we'll go into different types of democracy. So, and these are just words again, direct, representative, uh, participatory, parliamentary versus presidential or Republican democracy, unitary democracy versus federal democracy. Again, these are your headings understanding of each of these terms is going to be what's talked about by the, the lecture okay so you want to make those have these as your headings but then you want to make sure that you follow that up with clear understanding of um, what each is and 
when you see something like direct versus representative versus participatory, not only what each is, but what's the difference between the two? What are the uh, similarities and what are the differences between those, those three concepts? All right. So make sure you're clear on that as you're going through your notes uh, and your note taking. That's the purpose of PowerPoint. And you really want your notes to be guided by the PowerPoint as headings, right? There's going to be the odd thing that's going to have uh, a very clear um, definition that the instructor might want you to have that you might want to copy word for word, make sure that's in there. Uh, but again here, you're going to get slides like this legislative branch of democracy, executive branch of democracy, judicial branch of democracy. If you wrote down word for word what's on this slide, you're going to have no idea how to answer questions in this regard when it comes to an examination. All right, These are your headings and it's just a way of guiding your headings and, and a way for the instructors to be able to keep on track as far as the learning objectives, the learning outcomes that we have established for each lesson. All right. So really keep yourself in this Cornell method or whatever method you choose to what are the key ideas? What are the key things I need to know? Uh, the key summaries of each lesson. That's going to enhance your learning over the whole course of all the program. You're going to create questions for other classes, which again, if you set up your page like this in the Cornell method, put those over there. Oh, I want to ask... Uh, Kelly about this or I want to ask Blair about that because he's presented it differently or she's presented it differently than what was presented in this class when we might be talking about different variations of the same idea and clarifying so that you have a clear conception of what those ideas are is really important for your overall learning it makes an active learner rather than a passive learner and passive learning really makes everything that much harder for yourself thanks